Now, clothes serve the obvious function of covering your body, but they also sometimes speak to distinction and rank. And most of the distinctions in this world are pretentious and speak to all sorts of false ideals and constructs of superiority. And that's why there's the saying that expensive clothing is a poor man's attempt to appear prosperous. And then of course you have the way that clothes have historically been used to define castes in society. And that's why in Hajj, the ihram is a means of removing distinction and equalizing all people before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have all these people in the same place calling out to Allah, but their ranks are ideally supposed to be completely unknown to all but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on the day of judgment, what are our clothes sewn by? They're sewn by our deeds and our distinction is made clear solely on the basis of our deeds. And this deeper meaning of clothes in the Quran is in multiple places. So for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, libasu taqwa, the cloth of piety, or wathiyabaka fatahir, purify your garment, which many of the scholars said means your deeds. Or how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the spouse as a garment to the spouse and that they conceal and they beautify. So the needles with which you sew your garment in the hereafter are the days and hours passing by in this world. And the garment that you have in the hereafter is the culmination of that lifetime of sewing your garment. And for some, they're going to show up on the day of judgment and find no garment of good for them. And Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha describes this. She says, one night I saw the Prophet وسلم, and he kept on saying, Kam min kasiyatin fi dunya, aariyatin yawm al qiyamah. How many people are well dressed in this life only to be completely naked on the day of resurrection? In an authentic narration, Abu Sa'id al Khudri, anhu, he says, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Inna al mayyita. That the dead person will be resurrected in the clothes in which he dies. But of course, we know the narration that is more popular and widely reported and authentic that people are naked on the Day of Judgment. Some scholars said that this is at some point on the Day of Judgment, meaning you first show up out of your grave with the clothes that you had at death and then they're taken away. Others said that this refers to the kafan that separates the believers from the disbelievers. And some said this refers to your deeds. In any case, we have sufficient evidence to say that the priority and choice of clothing on the Day of Judgment is based upon righteousness. And it specifically surrounds this notion of honor. And honor is through two ways, through personal piety, and then it's through honoring others, your brothers and sisters. Now, the first person the Prophet told us is going to be dressed on the Day of Judgment is our father Ibrahim and the scholars say that's not just because he was constant in praying for honor on the Day of Judgment, but it's because of the humiliation of when he was stripped in front of the people and thrown into a fire. So look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it up to him. He's brought forth in front of all of the people on the Day of Judgment, just as he was brought forth in front of his people in this life. But this time, he's given the special garment that's reserved for him while everybody else is waiting for their turn. Now, at that point, you have those who sought honor in this life through pretentious clothing. And for them, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ لَبِسَ ثَوْبَ شُهْرَةٍ فِي الدُّنْيَا أَلْبَسَهُ اللَّهُ ثَوْبَ مَذَلَّةٍ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ That whoever wears a pretentious garment in this life will have a garment of humiliation on the Day of Judgment. The Prophet ﷺ said in another narration, on the other hand, مَنْ تَرَكَ اللِّبَاسَ تَوَاضُعًا لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ يَقْدِرُ عَلَيْهِ Whoever gives up fine clothes due to humility for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though he is able to wear them, Allah will call him on the day of judgment in front of all creation that he may choose any garment of faith that he desires to wear. Now, wait a minute. Does this mean that wearing nice clothes, if you can afford them, is a problem? No, because the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah likes to see his blessing on the one who he's bestowed it upon. But this is referring to clothes that are extravagant and corrupt the person or corrupt society with false standards. So the scholars say first and foremost, clothes that are haram, like silk for men. And the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever wears silk in this life will not wear it in the next. Then you have clothes 
that people can't afford. So it makes them feel bad and it sets a bad trend in society. Then you have clothes that are worn to show off. So the permissible, pure and modest, even if nice, is what is preferable. Now beyond that, remember the Quran and Sadaqah being your companion and your shade. They continue to bear their blessings here when it comes to your clothing. Firstly, you have with the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ said, the Quran comes and it says to its companion, O Lord, decorate him. So he's then clothed with a crown of nobility. ثُمَّ يُقَالُ لَهُ يَا رَبِّ زِدْهُ And then the Quran continues to say, O my Lord, give him more. فَيُلْبَسُ حُلَّةَ الْكَرَامَ And so he's clothed with a suit of nobility. ثُمَّ يَقُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِرْضَ عَنْهُ فَيَرْضَ عَنْهُ So then it says, O my Lord, be pleased with him. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with him. And he will say, recite and rise up, be increased in honor for every single verse. But it doesn't just stop with that companion of Quran. The Prophet ﷺ said his parents are then dressed with these two beautiful garments and they are unmatched in beauty by anything in this world. So they say, Ya Rabb, bima kusina hadha, O our Lord, for what reason were we given these garments? And it is said to them by your child's memorization of the Quran. So that's the honor of the Quran, which we're still not finished with on this day. As for the charity, remember that charity is of multiple types. So the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا مِنْ مُؤْمِنْ يُعَزِّي أَخَاهُ بِمُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا كَسَاهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ حُلَلِ الْكَرَامَةِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ That no believer consoles his brother at the time of calamity, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will dress him with noble garments on the day of resurrection. But my favorite narration in this regard is another one that shows you how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always outdo the kindness that you show to your brother or sister. And it's narration from Abu Sa'id radiallahu anhu. He says that the Prophet ﷺ said, وَأَيُّمَا مُؤْمِنٍ كَسَى مُؤْمِنًا عَلَىٰ عُرْيٍ And whenever a believer clothes a naked believer, كَسَاهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ خُضْرِ الْجَنَّةِ Allah will clothe him on the day of judgment from the green garments of paradise. So the clothes of honor on that day are for those who honor themselves with good deeds. And it's also for those specifically who honor their brothers and sisters by clothing them when they are in need.